Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Resolution is the smallest distance between two points on a specimen that can still be seen as separate objects. It is a measure of how well a microscope can distinguish the details of a sample. Magnification is the ability of a microscope to make an image of an object larger than its actual size. They are two different aspects of a microscope and are independent. If the microscope has a low resolution, the image will likely become less clear as magnification increases. It can't be clearer. Resolution is half of the wavelength used. If a longer wavelength is used, the resolution will be a larger value which means a poorer ability to distinguish two points as separate. Magnification depends on the magnifying power of the objective lens and the eyepiece lens. Resolution depends on the wavelength of the light source. They are not related to the same factor. For the scales on the eyepiece reticule align to one stage micrometer scale. The small divisions of the stage micrometer scale are 0.1 mm or 100 micrometers. So, one IP scale is 2.5 micrometers. The nucleus of the cell measured 10 IP scale. The actual diameter of the nucleus is 25 micrometer. All enzymes are proteins. To synthesize proteins, transcription has to take place inside the nucleus. Then, the mRNA will move to the RER where translation takes place to produce polypeptide. The polypeptide is then transported to the Golgi body for modification and packaging. It is packed into secretory vesicle and transported to the cell surface membrane for exocytosis. A is wrong because microvilli are not composed of microtubules. That is why they cannot move. B is also wrong as centrioles do not have any role in DNA replication. C is incorrect because the role of cilia is to create wave-like movement, not to increase surface area. D is the correct description of microtubules' role in nuclear division. Plasmodesmata are microscopic membrane-like channels that traverse the cell walls of plant cells. They allow transport and communication between the adjacent cells. A is the correct description. B is wrong as they are not formed from proteins. C is incorrect because the apoplast pathway refers to water movement in the cell wall and intercellular space. Water does not move into the cytoplasm, hence plasmodesmata are not involved. D is wrong because pits are the non-lignified areas within a lignified cell wall. Chloroplasts and mitochondrion contain circular DNA. The ribosome is made up of proteins and rRNA. The Golgi body is the only one without nuclear acid. Hydrolysis is a chemical reaction in which a molecule of water breaks chemical bonds. It is needed to break down many biological molecules and occurs in both types of cells. Mitosis is a type of nuclear division. Prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, so they do not carry out mitosis. Both cells need to produce proteins, so transcription and translation must occur. All viruses have either DNA or RNA. So, they must contain phosphodiester bonds. Phosphodiester bond is a covalent bond, so 1 and 3 are correct. Some viruses have lipid envelopes, but this is not a feature of all viruses, so not all of them have ester bonds. The diagram shows an alpha glucose. We can tell by the position of the hydroxyl group on carbon number 1, which is below the plane. Glycogen and amylopectin are polysaccharides made up of alpha-glucose. Sucrose is made up of an alpha-glucose and a fructose. Since all three fatty acids must be included, there are three arrangements. Note that you can't count those molecules with reverse arrangements as two, because they are the same molecule viewed from different directions. For example, P-O-L and L-O-P are the same, so they can only be considered as one arrangement. A is wrong because it only contains two fatty acids. They can be saturated or unsaturated. B is wrong because the bond found in phospholipids is the ester bond. C is correct. They have hydrophilic heads 
and hydrophobic tails. D is wrong as the phosphate head is hydrophilic. Water's high specific heat capacity prevents an increase in temperature inside a plant too easily. So, it is true that it can avoid the denaturation of enzymes due to a high temperature on a hot day. Due to the high latent heat of vaporization, a lot of heat energy is required for water to evaporate. This prevents the process from happening too rapidly when the weather is hot. Three talks about what happens at night, which is irrelevant to the question. Four is correct. Hydrogen bonds lead to transpiration pool. On a hot sunny day, the rate of transpiration is high. Water can move rapidly from the roots to the leaves where water loss occurs. Adjacent cellulose molecules are linked by hydrogen bonds, not glycosidic. B is incorrect because the molecule is linear or unbranched. The monomers of cellulose molecules are beta-glucose. The molecules are unbranched, so there are no 1,6 glycosidic bonds. D is correct. Hydrogen bonds join the adjacent molecules to form microfibules. 1 is correct. Enzymes bring the reactants closer together, so the reaction can occur more easily. 2 is correct as well. Enzymes lower the activation energy, so it will be easier for the substrate to have sufficient energy for the reaction to take place. Due to the lowered activation energy, a lower temperature is required to supply sufficient heat energy for the reaction to take place. A substrate has a complementary shape with the active site. They do not have the same shape. The enzyme is less likely to be affected by competitive inhibitors as the inhibitor may not be able to cause the induced feed action of the enzyme. Non-competitive inhibitors should have the same effect on both mechanisms. Both hypotheses state that the R groups at the active site interact with the substrate, forming temporary bonds for the reaction to occur. The graph shows that the immobilized papain denatures at a higher temperature. This means immobilization has increased the thermostability of the enzyme. So, C is the correct answer. A and B indicates the technique has negative effects on the enzyme at high temperatures. These are not true based on the graph. D may be an effect of the immobilization technique, but it is not shown in the graph as immobilized papain has the same activity with the free enzyme at low temperatures and a higher activity at high temperatures. Phospholipid molecules do not act as receptors. It is the proteins on the cell surface membranes that act as receptors. The binding causes the receptor to change its shape. This leads to the activation of G protein. The receptor does not leave the membrane. Endocytic vesicles form after the cell surface membrane invaginate to engulf the materials. In exocytosis, secretory vesicles form from the Golgi body to transport the material towards the cell surface membrane. So, the first statement is correct. Both processes allow the transportation of large molecules or a large quantity of substances. Statement 2 is correct. Statement 3 correctly states the direction of the movement. During endocytosis, the cell surface membrane pinches off to form a vesicle, leading to membrane loss. In exocytosis, secretory vesicle fuses with the cell surface membrane, causing an increase of the membrane. The total surface area of a cube is 6 times the length of its side square. Volume is length cube. The ratio is 1.1 to 1. A is the description of metaphase. After arriving at the poles, chromosomes uncoil, and the nuclear envelope reforms. So, B is the correct description of telophase. C is about anaphase where sister chromatids separate and move to the opposite poles. D occurs during prophase. Chromatin condenses and becomes chromosomes. In the photomicrograph, we can see two groups of chromosomes. However, we can't tell whether they are still moving or have reached the opposite poles of the cell. So, B is the answer. A is not the answer as 
we do not use the visibility of centrioles to determine the stage of mitosis. C is wrong because it is clear that there is only one mitotic cell in the photo as there is no cell surface membrane separating the two sites. D is incorrect because if interface has started, we should see the nuclear envelope. The lagging strand and leading strand are complementary to the two opposite strands in the parental DNA molecules. So, they are complementary to each other. The Okazaki fragments at the lagging strands are one new strand of DNA. So, it is one polynucleotide strand. DNA contains phosphate as well, so the third column is not correct. The question says that ATC codes for the new amino acid. So, the new tRNA should correspond to ATC. ATC triplet transcribed into UAG in mRNA codon. tRNA anticodon that is complementary to the codon would be AUC. If 40% of the bases in the non-transcribed strains are purine, 40% of the bases on the transcribed strain would be pyrimidines. This also means that 40% of the bases on the mRNA are purine. This is because of the complementary base pairing rule. So, 60% of the bases on the mRNA are C and U, the pyrimidines. A is wrong because water can only move upwards in the xylem vessels. B is correct. Pits, the unlignified openings on the cell wall of xylem vessels, allow lateral movement of water to adjacent cells. Xylem vessel is a dead element that does not contain cytoplasm, so mitochondria would not be present. The end walls between the cells are fully broken down to form a continuous column, so D is incorrect. Only the sieve tube elements contain the sieve plate. A is wrong because the question mentioned that the ammonium ions can enter the xylem without entering the cytoplasm in the mutant plant. B is incorrect as the graph shows that more ions enter the xylem for both varieties where there is a high concentration of ammonium ions. C is wrong because if the Casparin strip does act as a barrier, the mutants should have a higher uptake of ions. D is correct. In both low and high concentrations, the difference is not much. Cohesion allows water to move as a continuous column in xylem vessels. Diffusion of water vapor occurs near the stomata. Water vapor moves down the water potential gradient from the substomata airspace into the atmosphere. Evaporation takes place at the wall of the mesophyll cell wall. Water changes from the liquid to gas form. Water vapor diffuses out afterwards. Even though red blood cells do not have mitochondria, they can still produce ATP by glycolysis in the cytoplasm. So, they can carry out active transport. Without nuclei, they cannot carry out cell division and transcription. Red blood cells are not phagocytes. They are not specialized for this process. X has a large and circular nucleus, which takes up a large proportion of its cytoplasm. This is a feature of lymphocytes. Neutrophils have multi-lobed nuclei. Monocytes are generally larger than other white blood cells and have a horseshoe-shaped nucleus. Muscular arteries are medium-sized arteries that distribute blood to organs. They are further from the heart compared to the elastic arteries. If a muscular artery is damaged, the organ receiving blood from it will not get the blood. The vein is the one that returns blood to the right atrium of the heart. Elastic arteries are large blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart. They are closer to the heart compared to the muscular artery. An example is the aorta. One of its role is to maintain the blood pressure. At the arterial end, the pressure causing fluid to move out is 3.2 kPa. The pressure leading to the opposite movement is 2.0 kPa. The net movement is the difference in these values. After carbon dioxide enters the red blood cells, the enzyme carbonic anhydrase catalyzes its reaction with water to form carbonic acid. It will then dissociate into proton and hydrogen carbonate ion. 
the hydrogen carbonate ion diffuses out its concentration gradient, leading to a chloride shift, which compensates for the loss of negatively charged ions. D describes the correct direction of the movement while A states the opposite. B is wrong because chloride does not bind to the hemoglobin. C is incorrect as hydrogen ions will not move out of the cells. All three of the structures contain slated epithelium, not squamous epithelium. Bronchioles do not have cartilage. The endothelium is found in blood vessels, not respiratory airways. Cartilage is present in the section, so it cannot be alveolus and bronchial. The cartilage does not form a C-shaped ring, but just fragments. This is not a trachea, but a bronchus. Clean and warm air does not affect the rates of diffusion. Two is correct because the rates of diffusion increases when the surface area for it to take place increases. The shorter the diffusion distance, the greater the rate. So, three is correct. TB is not a waterborne disease, so one is irrelevant. Two is correct because when the pathogen is inactive, it is difficult for antibiotics to act on it. Besides, an inactive pathogen may not cause any symptoms, causing the infected individual not to realize the infection. Drug-resistant pathogen causes antibiotic treatments to be ineffective, contributing to the difficulties of eliminating the disease. Using specific antibiotics can kill the bacteria more effectively and does not affect the non-target bacteria. So, the risk of antibiotic resistance in the survived bacteria and non-target bacteria can be reduced. Antibiotics do not affect viruses. It will cause the non-targeted bacteria present in the person's body to start developing resistance due to the exposure. Having new antibiotics reduces the repeated exposure of bacteria to the same antibiotics. Not only this can kill them more effectively, but when they are not exposed to the same antibiotic again and again, the chance of them developing resistance to this particular antibiotic will reduce. A is wrong because zones of less than 13 mm show the presence of resistant bacteria, but 1 and 5 are larger than this size. B is correct as 2, 3 and 4 have zones that are less than 13 mm. C is wrong as 3 shows resistance. D is incorrect because we can't conclude this based on a 5-day experiment. Phagocytes use the receptor on their cell surface membrane to bind with the specific antigens on pathogens. This recognition will kickstart the phagocytosis process. After the pathogen is engulfed, the lysosomes in the phagocyte release hydrolytic enzymes into the phagocytic vacuole for the digestion of the pathogen to take place. Following the vaccination, the cells that receive the mRNA carry out translation to produce the protein coded by it. This protein will be displayed on the cell surface membrane as an antigen. Clonal selection of the lymphocytes will then take place. Some of the lymphocytes differentiate into memory cells and provide immunological memory. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.